Hi everyone, welcome to the KOPS channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today you're going to be evolving our uh, CLI a little bit more. Last video we created a way of checking if a file exists, but we need to also be able to check if the variable that we are expecting in the setup was created, it was there. Right? If only the file exists, it's not enough because in the files there are a lot of configuration that needs to be done and you need to check if those config configuration uh, were ex uh, exists in, in, in a shape of a, uh, a variable. Right? If the variable exists and has a value, then we are fine. And important to note that uh, we I have been using the CLI not only to show you how to create a CLI, but how how you can do various stuff in in, in shell, how you can do a uh, an if in shell, how can you check if a file exists, if a variable exists, uh, how can you access a variable, how can you access uh, a variable that it, it's it's in another variable. So there are various stuff that I've uh, that I've been teaching you along the way. So, and I believe this is a very important knowledge for your daily activities as a DevOps engineer or as a QA immersed in a DevOps culture environment. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. Uh, I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous one, one so you can keep it up. And so what we have is we're going to improve our CLI a little more. We have this check that we did in, in, in previous videos, and I'm going to be posting the links for the, the, this video, uh, in where in which we we create make sure they use the the user set up this file. So what we are going to do now is we're going to make sure that this file has a variable set because if the user does not create this file, uh, it does not create this variable, just create the file, then it might not work, right? Because we are going to be relying on this variable to be set. So I need to check if the variable was set. So what I'm going to do is in our setup check, I'm going to increase here and I'm going to do session title. And now I'm going to create check if all variables were set right this is just this title here and now i'm going to create a function called check if var exists i'm going to pass on the var which is this one and i'm going to pass a message and the message is going to be make sure the make sure the uh the file has this variable. Cool. Now I'm going to check, create the function itself, right? And oh, uh, I, I missed it. I added an extra indentation there. All right. So uh, it's going to be a local var in position one. And also a help message. I'm going to just to copy this one, put it here, and I'm going to say uh, you need to set up the CLI. Great. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to log the var the value of the variable because I'm not sure if you remember. We can do dash dash debug here, and this is going to uh, this is going to show this kind of logs, which is a uh, debugging log, right? The user does not need to see like this, this thing here. The user does, does not need to see this, right? So, but I, I want to log the value. So whenever I'm debugging, I know if there are any issues. So what I'm going to do is the value Of, and I'm going to say var, so the value of git ssh protocol. And I'm going to now want, I, I want the value itself. I cannot put var here 
right? Otherwise, it's going to be the value of Git SSH protocol is Git SSH protocol, which is not what I want. I want the actual value. Here's just the string, right? When I do export name, when I do name, Rafael, I don't want to do echo name. I want to do echo and the, ver the value of the variable. In this case, I'm receiving as a string <clears throat> the name of the variable. Now I want shell to interpret that value. So I'm going to use a exclamation mark. So now shell knows that I do not want the name of the variable. I want the value of the variable. I want it to interpret that string as a variable. So now the value of Git SSH protocol, true. So this is a debug message. I don't need to show the user. So we, when I do not pass debug, <coughs> this does not show. Clever, right? So now what, I, what I'm going to do with this thing, I'm going to say that if, and I can do dash Z or dash N, so dash Z is going to check if the string is zero, right? If the string is, is zero, I'm going to send an error message, right? Or I can do dash N to check if the string is not zero, it's greater than zero, and this is what I'm going to do, right? And now this, the value of the string is the actual value of the variable. I, I wanna make sure that that variable, uh, the value uh, was set. So I'm going to now do in green and I'm going to pass a message saying var var exists. If not, I'm going to say in green, in red, sorry, because we are not passing error anymore. I want to list everything and I'm going to say var var does not exist and I'm going to close my if when I do setup check it's here value exists and let's try it out if I ignore if I comment this is going to var does not exist and we miss the message because we did not say we did not break the line and pass the help message right I want to pass whatever help message we have. So now it's going to say, make sure this file has the variable, right? So another thing that this is going to like, a, if the variable will exist, but there is nothing there, it's going to give an error. If the value has a string, but it's an empty string, is going to give an error. We, we need to see the value, right? Cool. So now, one thing that is bothering me is every time that we, we, pa we pass a message, we, we are using the dash and we are breaking the line every time. And is there a way that I, I don't need to break the line? Yes. But then we need to change the core of this framework. And then I'm not going to need to worry about that any place else in the in the in the CLI. The problem with this approach is because I'm changing the core of the framework, and that means that whenever I need to update the framework, like the owner created a, a, a better version, create they did some update. When I'm, I'll try to to get his changes, it's going to generate a conflict because I just changed his CLI and then i'm going to resolve that need to resolve that conflict myself but that's okay All right so here in, in the in the left the bb is the actual core of the script and you can see that there are various functions we use the main command already we use the root dir we use a bunch of stuff everything that's that's uh we the error command is here i'm uh, the colors are here. So these are the colors you have been using. It's sending the colors of uh, uh, the, 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 it's setting the color here and is also 
getting the value, the, the, the value that we send for the message, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to do dash n, right? But inside the string. So now every time that I use this is going to actually change, uh, do a break line. So you can see now it's much bigger, right? But we need to do some adjustments. I don't need this space here. I don't need this space. I don't need this space, right? So let's remove what we don't need. So let's, I don't need this anymore. I need this because this is one line and this is another line. The same thing here. I don't need this anymore. And I need to change this, right? So this is in the environment. We added a bunch of these, so I don't need these anymore. I don't need the very end anymore. And I don't need the beginning. I need these because I want to separate, have this separation here, right? So setup check. So much cleaner and I have this separation. If I remove this, I don't have this separation anymore, in that, but everything seems clogged. So I'm going to add the separation. And now you have a nice separation between things. So I really like this. Awesome. So that, that's it. You can see that this is a very versatile uh, thing that you can do. Uh, of course, the magic is not. I'm trying to simulate things and I'm going to be showing you show you in the future stuff that I did in, in a, uh, that helped me on my daily activities, uh, uh, either for developing or testing. Uh, and it proved the whole team, the whole team used this approach. It was some manual stuff that you had to do. And, and the CLI removed that manual toil. But the, the, the beauty and the magic behind it, it's, it's, how are you going to use that in your daily lives? What is that you want to remove from the hassle and the toil from your team? Uh, your creativity of creating stuff and adding to the CLI uh, so that you can use your time in more creative stuff and not in, in repetitive manual tasks. So that's basically it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. Uh, if you like, give the thumbs up. And it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. And I'm going to see you on my next video. Bye.